Miami Dade complied with Trump to change its sanctuary status. Hello, folks. My name is Jen. I'm from Golden State Times, and today we have a new story. This one comes courtesy of the Miami Herald, and it says that for the first time since it began extending the detentions of local inmates sought for deportation, Miami-Dade County received word from Washington that it won't be treated as a community-giving sanctuary to immigrant violators. On an August 4th letter to Mayor Carlos Jimenez from the Justice Department, It said that there was no evidence Miami-Dade was out of compliance with the immigration provision of the federal police grant worth over $480,000 this year to the county. Shortly after President Donald Trump took office promising an immigration crackdown, Jimenez reversed a 2013 county policy and ordered Miami-Dade jails to begin honoring requests by immigration officers to extend detentions of people in local custody who are also being sought for possible deportation. Miami-Dade is the only large jurisdiction known to have done this kind of change, which the county commission endorsed in February. As a result, it has been assumed that Miami-Dade will be shielded from any loss of federal funds the Trump administration engineered as part of a broader effort to punish uh, communities not cooperating on immigration detention. Jimenez's change of policy sparked outrage from local immigration advocates who accused the Cuban-born mayor of betraying the Miami-Dade heritage of welcoming immigrants and advocating and embracing of new arrivals to the country. Despite the threats, the Trump administration has not yet announced an actual loss of federal dollars tied to local immigration policies On Monday, Chicago announced that they will be suing the Trump administration over expected loss of federal funds over the city's policy on immigration enforcement, which includes not honoring federal detention requests. Sanctuary cities have been a hot topic in recent months, but the modern movement began more than 30 years ago in Tucson, Arizona. So that's where it all started, folks. Tucson, Arizona. That's good to know. It says the detention requests typically last over 48 hours, plus holidays and weekends, and are designed to give immigration officers more time to apprehend a deportation suspect who has been arrested and held on unrelated local charges. In April, the Trump administration sent a warning letter to Miami-Dade and eight other state and local governments warning of their about compliance with federal rules requiring cooperation with immigration officials. The list mirrored a roster published in 2016 by the Obama administration of possible sanctuary communities. The Miami-Dade was, it says Miami-Dade included then because of the 2013 policy to reject detention requests unless two conditions were met. So two conditions have to be met for Miami-Dade to comply at that time. One will be Washington had to pay for the extra detention time which it generally will not do, and two, immigration authorities had to be seeking someone accused of a serious crime. Now, now, they don't go into, you know, they don't don't specify what a serious crime is, but they say that that's the two conditions at that time. Now it's different. Now they're willing to comply no matter what, okay? So Mike Hernandez, which is the communications director of Mayor Jimenez of the Miami-Dade area, said at my at Mayor Jimenez sent this memo to Miami-Dade BCC regarding the Justice Department determining Miami-Dade County complies with Section 1373, which is the um, the I think it's uh, um, the executive order about not giving funds to sanctuary cities. I think I think that's what 1373 is. And they're eligible for government assistance. It says Miami-Dade responded to the Trump administration warning letter with a rundown of its current immigration policies, including the new policy of accepting of detention request. The August 4th letter from Alan Hansen, an acting assistant attorney general, essentially cleared Miami-Dade of the loss of funds held out by held 
out as a possibility in the first letter. So Michael Hernandez, Jimenez's uh, communications director, said, quote, this is good news. All right. So they wanted to get the green light. OK, they wanted to be they didn't want to be blacklisted like all the other sanctuary cities are. He says, even so, Hernandez said Miami-Dade still wants the Trump administration to declare the Miami-Dade no longer be belongs in the sanctuary list published by the Obama administration. They said, quote, we'd have to, it says, we'd like to have formal notification that we are no longer a sanctuary community. And he said, the request is being made. So they really want to step aside. They really want to distance themselves from being a sanctuary city. So that is a really big jurisdiction. Like I said, it's a very, very big deal. If Miami saying, you know what? We don't want to be part of this sanctuary city uh, rule anymore. We took it off already off our books. We're complying with local uh, immigration officials. We're keeping people who are immigrants who are up for deportation longer in order for immigration officials to come and pick them up. So we're complying and we we want to get off that list. We want to get off that um, sanctuary city list. We are no longer sanctuary city and we want to make sure that the Trump administration removes us and gives us confirmation that we've been removed. That's what they're saying, folks. OK, so. This is very big news, okay? And you guys are going to start seeing that little by little, more and more cities are going to be like, fine, we're not going to be sanctuary cities anymore. And, um, you know, the, the ones that are like hardcore sanctuary cities like San Francisco and, and Chicago and, and other places, they're going to try to do anything and everything possible to stay a sanctuary city. OK, they're going to try to sue just like what Chicago is doing. They're going to try to bitch and moan and do everything and pout and do everything they possibly can. But at the end of the day, if they don't take away their sanctuary city status, they will not receive funds. OK. So right now, the one that is being an example for all the other sanctuary cities is Miami-Dade. They are the ones that are saying, you know what? This whole sanctuary thing is not a good idea, especially right now for the next eight years. This is not a good idea. We have to follow federal law. So let us know what you guys think about this, folks. Do you guys uh, applaud Miami-Dade for saying, you know what? We are no longer a sanctuary city. We want the Trump administration to take us off that list that was created by the Obama administration. And uh, we want to show that we are in compliance and we want it to be taken off the list, like I said, and we are doing our best to comply with federal law. They can't ask more than, that. you know, uh, the Trump administration can not ask for more than that. So it's a very good thing. All these criminal illegal aliens are being deported. They're getting out of here. They're not going to be sent back into the community so they can continue their crime sprees. So that's a very good thing. And, you know, there's tons and tons of Cubans for Trump, folks. There's so many, so many, so many Cubans for Trump, especially in the Miami area. There's tons of Cubans for Trump and um, they love him. They love him because they know that he wants to bring back jobs. They love him because they know that he loves the country just as much as they do. OK, they don't want these criminal illegals running around causing trouble in their neighborhoods they get it. They understand it. OK, so if you are a Cuban for Trump, thank you very much for being such a patriot. Keep pushing out in Florida. I know that Florida is like a big Trump country. So, you know, a shout out to Florida, a shout out to Miami Dade. And you guys are doing an awesome job. Congrats on taking off that label of being a sanctuary city It's going to help the city. It's going to make it safer. And it's going, you are on the path to making America great again. Thank you very much, everyone. My name is Jen. I'm from Golden State Times. If you guys missed any of our previous videos, they should be coming up on your screen. They're interactive. Click on them and uh, they'll take you to the video you might want to watch. Give it a thumbs up and share it along with this one. If you, uh, you know, if you agree with Miami-Dade, 
And if you're happy that Miami changed their mind from being Sanctuary City, give this video a thumbs up. And also let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about this. Um, follow us on social media. If you have Facebook, like us on Facebook. If you have Twitter, follow us. And last but not least, if you would like to sign up to our newsletter, go to goldenstatetimes.com. Again, that's goldenstatetimes.com and sign up. Uh, you know, we'll be sending a newsletter to you every other day full of news and articles and live streams that you might have missed, live streams that are coming up soon, and information on the channel and politics and all that stuff. So all that will go straight to your inbox if you guys sign up at goldenstatetimes.com. And uh, one last thing, we're trying to get to the next Trump rally that would happen sometime in September. We have been given the honor to cover it using our own cameras with press passes. But now we need to actually get there. And uh, we're so close to getting the funds to getting there, but we still need some help. So if you would like to help, the link is in the description below for our PayPal. Or you can go to our GoFundMe and go through them. The link is on your screen or in the description below. You can also go to goldenstatetimes.com and you can just click on the buttons on there and they'll take you to either our PayPal or GoFundMe, whichever one you guys want to use, a dollar, five dollars, whatever you can help us with, we'll appreciate it so much and it will get us just that much closer to going and uh, streaming and filming the rallies using our own cameras, panning the crowds, talking to the people you know, engaging with, uh, with the community. It's, it's awesome. It's such, it's such an awesome opportunity. And we're so glad that we have been blessed with that opportunity. So we just need the help of the community to get, um, over there when it happens. But yeah, folks, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jen. I'm from Golden State Times. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Two, immigration authorities had to be seeking someone accused of a serious crime. Now, now they don't go into, you know, they don't, they don't specify what a serious crime is. But they're, they're saying that that's the two conditions at that time. Now it's different. Now they're willing to comply no matter what. Okay. So Mike Hernandez, which is the communications director of Mayor Jimenez of the Miami-Dade area, said at my at mayor jimenez sent this memo to miami dade bcc regarding the justice department determining miami dade county complies with section 1373 which is the um the i think it's the uh, um the executive order about not giving funds to sanctuary cities i think i think that's what 1373 is and they're eligible for government assistance. It says Miami-Dade responded to the Trump administration warning letter with a rundown of its current immigration policies, including the new policy of accepting of detention request. The Miami-Dade complied with Trump to change its sanctuary status. Hello, folks. My name is Jen. I'm from Golden State Times. And today we have a new story. This one comes courtesy of the Miami Herald. And it says that for the first time since it began extending the detentions of local inmates sought for deportation, Miami-Dade County received word from Washington that it won't be treated as a community giving sanctuary to immigrant violators. On an August 4th letter to Mayor Carlos Jimenez from the Justice Department, it said that there was no evidence Miami-Dade was out of compliance with the immigration provision of the federal police grant worth over $480,000 this year to the county. Shortly after President Donald Trump took office promising an immigration crackdown, Jimenez reversed a 2013 county policy and ordered Miami-Dade jails to begin honoring requests by immigration officers to extend detentions of people in local custody. The August 4th letter from Alan Hansen, an acting assistant attorney general, essentially cleared Miami-Dade of the loss of funds held out by held out as a possibility in the first letter. So 
Michael Hernandez, Jimenez's uh, communications director, said, quote, this is good news. All right. So they wanted to get the green light. OK, they wanted to be they didn't want to be blacklisted like all the other sanctuary cities are. He says, even so, Hernandez said Miami-Dade still wants the Trump administration to declare the Miami-Dade no longer be- belongs in the sanctuary list published by the Obama administration. They said, quote, we'd have to, it says, we'd like to have formal notification that we are no longer a sanctuary community. And he said, the request is being made. So they really want to step aside. They really want to distance themselves from being a sanctuary city. So that is a really big jurisdiction. Like I said, it's a very, very big deal. Hot topic in recent months, but the modern movement began more than 30 years ago in Tucson, Arizona. So that's where it all started, folks. Tucson, Arizona. That's good to know. It says the detention requests typically last over 48 hours plus holidays and weekends and are designed to give immigration officers more time to apprehend a deportation suspect who has been arrested and held on unrelated local charges. In April, the Trump administration sent a warning letter to Miami-Dade and eight other state and local governments warning of their about compliance with federal rules requiring cooperation with immigration officials. The list mirrored a roster published in 2016 by the Obama administration of possible sanctuary communities. The Miami-Dade was, it says Miami-Dade included then because of the 2013 policy to reject detention requests unless two conditions were met. So two conditions have to be met for Miami-Dade to comply at that time. One will be Washington had to pay for the extra detention time which it generally will not do, and who are also being sought for possible deportation. Miami-Dade is the only large jurisdiction known to have done this kind of change, which the county commission endorsed in February. As a result, it has been assumed that Miami-Dade will be shielded from any loss of federal funds the Trump administration engineered as part of a broader effort to punish uh, communities not cooperating on immigration detention. Jimenez's change of policy sparked outrage from local immigration advocates who accused the Cuban-born mayor of betraying the Miami-Dade heritage of welcoming immigrants and advocating and embracing of new arrivals to the country. Despite the threats, the Trump administration has not yet announced an actual loss of federal dollars tied to local immigration policies. On Monday, Chicago announced that they will be suing the Trump administration over expected loss of federal funds over the city's policy on immigration enforcement, which includes not honoring federal detention requests. Sanctuary cities have been 